We're going to talk about the sulfonation of benzene with this mechanism. First off, you need to produce the sulfur trioxide um, molecule, which is the electrophile. And this is done by having two sulfuric acid molecules reacting with each other. This is very similar to what happened with the nitration of benzene, except here is the two sulfur, um, the two sulfuric acid molecules that are reacting. It doesn't matter which one's the acid and which one's the base, because they have the same pKa. And this will form an equilibrium reaction. I've only drawn out electrons on one of these. But what happens is that one of them acts as the proton donor and the other acts as the base and acts as the proton acceptor. And you do this to produce water as your leaving group. You're going to need to form a water molecule. Now these two chemical species can transfer that proton right back and go the way they were a moment before, but that's non-productive chemistry. Uh, what happens now is the oxygen with the proton forms the sulfur-oxygen double bond. At the same time, the sulfur-oxygen double bond is broken to release a water molecule. At this point, you can use the hydrogen sulfate anion or water as the base to pick off the proton. It doesn't matter which one does the job. So pick one of them. I'm going to use water because it does produce a slightly weaker conjugate acid by doing so, but you're going to pick off the proton and give these electrons back to the oxygen. And this will allow you to make sulfur trioxide, which actually does have several resonance structures. This is one of them. It's actually not the predominant resonance structure. The predominant resonance structures will be of this form that I'm drawing here, where you actually do have formal charges. And it can be any one of these three oxygens with the negative charge. You also have in solution at this point in time hydronium ion and hydrogen sulfate anion. But overall, we've been able to kick out water from sulfuric acid. And now we can use this sulfur trioxide molecule as the electrophile for electrophilic aromatic substitution. So you will have a benzene ring. Now again, remember, if you have substituents on there, you need to ask yourself whether they are electron donating or electron withdrawing. If they are electron donating, they're going to make the ring more nucleophilic and the reactions will occur more quickly, and they will also be orthopara directors. If they are electron withdrawing groups, they will be meta directing and the reaction will proceed at a slower rate. So we now have our sulfur trioxide electrophile that we made in the previous set of reactions. And the ring will act as the nucleophile. It will add to the sulfur, and as that occurs, one of these pi bonds to one of the oxygens breaks. Sorry, I forgot my electrons. And you will make your carbocation intermediate, which always has resonance stabilization of the positive charge.
Now, the resonance structures I will draw very briefly. I'm going to try and squeeze them in up here. I'm just going to draw it like that since I don't have room. But you could draw it out if you wanted like I did before up there. Now again, be aware that there may have been some substituents on the ring. If they were ortho or para, the positions I'm circling here in blue, notice those are the positions where the positive charge is going to be um, adjacent on the ring. So they would be electron donating into the ring at those positions and there would be a fourth resonance structure. If, on the other hand, you'd had a group in the meta position, which I'm circling here in green, it would have no effect on the number of resonant structures for this carbocation intermediate. There would just be the three. But again, if it was going to have a group ortho or para, there would be extra resonant structures, and when you have more resonance, you have more stabilization. And if it's more stable, it's a faster rate of reaction. Okay, so I'm going to redraw just one of these resonance structures for us. Okay, and at this point in time, you need to remove a proton, so we're going to do that with the hydrogen sulfate anion, and I did not draw that in a very good location, but we have our hydrogen sulfate anion, and it will remove the proton on this sp3 hybridized carbon. As that occurs, this pair of electrons between carbon and hydrogen will be reintroduced into the ring to reintroduce the aromaticity so that we've got the following. Okay, now at this point in time we have one thing left to do and that's to protonate one of the oxygens on the sulfonate anion. It doesn't matter which of these two oxygens picks it up, but one of them will and be able to make the final product.
So now we have benzene sulfonic acid. One neat thing about doing a sulfonation reaction is that it can actually be used as a protecting group. You can actually remove the sulfonic acid group if you so desire. Now, there are ways to do this. Okay, and what you typically do is you add just a little bit of sulfuric acid and you saturate the system with water and you heat it up. Okay, so I'm going to show at this point in time the reverse of the sulfonation reaction. It won't take very long, but I just want to point out that it is something that can be done. So first and foremost, your water would come in. Or you can also use, um, I didn't draw that quite right, sorry, and it's protonated at this point because water would have gotten the proton from the sulfuric acid. But you've got the hydronium ion or a source of acid in the solution. And you're going to protonate one of these oxygens up here that does not have the proton. Now, of course, there is another resonance structure for this. You could have had a sulfur oxygen double bond and gotten rid of the formal charges. Um, I'm going to use the oxygen with that negative charge to pick up this proton and give electrons back to the water. So at this point, you are going to have another addition. That sulfur is somewhat electropositive, and water will now have the ability to come in and add to it. You can break your pi bond. All right, so this is now where we are. And at this point, sulfur's, you know, content, but nothing else up here really is. And um, what happens is you are going to either kick water back out or you've got to do a proton transfer to the ring. And so you're going to do a proton transfer to the ring so that this bond can break. And uh, I'm going to show you how this occurs. But this oxygen will come in and reform double bond. As that is occurring, this pair of electrons is going to be given to the carbon and it will use it to pick up a proton and these electrons here will be given back to an oxygen. So you do get a benzene back. You've removed the group. And I doubt that we're going to, I will be honest, I'm not going to make anyone remember how to take it off. But um, this is how it is done. Now, in order to make the sulfur truly happy, Water or a, um, a sulfuric acid uh, conjugate base, the hydrogen sulfate anion, may come in and remove another proton and use this pair of electrons to give back, which will leave you with two sulfuric acid molecules. 